Ever wonder how to punch discs using this thing? Uh, this little video will show you how. Hi, I'm James, your friendly neighborhood metalsmith, and I'm here to show you how to use a disc punch uh, to make small discs of whatever sizes you might need for a particular project. And what I have here is 18 gauge aluminum and it is not annealed. A uh, common misconception is that softer metals will cut better, which is not true. So in this case, if you do need to anneal your discs for something else, you wanna do that after you cut them out. Uh, when they're annealed, they don't tend to cut as cleanly and they get more of a burr and kind of drag as they're being cut. So uh, I have this, this aluminum that's not annealed and I have the disc cutter ready and there's a variety of different sizes and I've matched up the punch with that. An important thing with the, the disc cutter punch is you never wanna mix up the cutting edge, which is completely square and flat versus the, the impact or striking side that usually has a slight kind of bevel to it uh, for striking with a hammer and to prevent mushrooming uh, from being used a lot. So don't ever mix those up or you're gonna run into some problems. And uh, what I'll do is uh, place the metal into the disc cutter, have the right size punch there. I do tend to uh, cut on a more stable surface like, uh, like this anvil, but I'll put something down like a, this heavier block of plastic to protect the anvil as the punch comes through. And I'll just line that up there. You do wanna have uh, safety goggles just in case that there's some, some little bit of metal that, that comes off of the, uh, the material as you're striking at a teeny piece of steel. Anytime that you're using a hammer and, and punch, you always wanna have safety glasses. If you're doing a lot of this, uh, certainly hearing protection could be a good idea too. Uh, I tend to use a, um, a bronze or brass mallet so that it has a nice weight at the end, but it's not steel on steel and it helps your punches kind of live a lot longer. So uh, that's, that's my preferred way of using any kind of uh, hammer with punches. So you just line that up, hold it in place and strike a couple times to punch through. And it's bottomed out at the bottom there and the disc just kind of falls right through and that's why I have that protective plastic block on the anvil. And I'll just gently tap the punch all the way through it to get set up for the next time. Sometimes it might stick in there. Of course, on the video, it will. <laughs> um. <laughs> so uh, I can remove that later to not waste your guys' time. But here's the, uh, the disc that it punched out. It is gonna, depending on the quality and age of the disc cutter, you are gonna get a little bit of a burr that you should probably sand or file back off before you do anything more with the discs that you need. Uh, if you were gonna do a larger size, uh, what's really necessary is to not use a hammer and switch to a hydraulic press. I understand not everybody has one of these in the studios, but if you do want to, to get into pressing any or punching any larger discs over an inch, it's really essential because the alignment is critical. And when you're striking it with a hammer, uh, the punch can get off center, damage the tool and not work as well. So don't take any shortcuts. It's really essential that it's in the press and you want to center that up. Again, I have the plastic block below it to uh, protect the tool surfaces. And I've lined the punch up with the center of the platens of the press. And I've, of course, this is not a, the permanent place for this press. So I have it clamped down to the, the workbench to make sure that it's not gonna come off the bench while we're working with it. And a hydraulic press is a wonderful and versatile tool in the studio. And I'm sure I'll do a bunch of other videos about that. Uh, but just for this case, Essentially, all you're doing is this is just a hydraulic bottle jack inside of a frame. And just like pumping up the jack on a car, um, you're just gonna slowly punch that through and the press will start punch, driving that punch through the material. You just wanna make sure that it's gone all the way through the material. And then you just release that pressure a little bit. And careful when you remove everything and you can drive that punch out later and then you have a larger punch disc and again it's going to have that slight burr which is typical and again a quick file or quick sanding can remove that um, 
But again, that would be those two main ways that you're cover gonna cover how you're gonna punch out your own discs. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can hear from me when I post future videos. Thanks for stopping by.